Hey there, this is Math 7, Unit 4, Lesson 12, called Finding the Percentage. And so we're going to find some unknown percentages today. So begin, first of all, with a little look at tax, tip, and discount, and how those would look um, as like a, like a little measurement, like a bar here. So what percentage of the car price is tax? When we take a look at this car price, this is the whole car price from here to here. And we can see that it's divided into four sections, one, two, three, four. And so each square would represent, in this case here, one fourth of the car price. The tax then also is the same size, so the tax is also going to be one fourth. One fourth can be written as a decimal, as 0.25, and converted into percent by moving over two spaces for 25%. So the tax in this case would be 25% of the car price. When we look at the percentage of the food cost, what percentage of the food cost is the tip? This food cost is broken up into five sections there. So every, every little block has a value of about one-fifth. One-fifth, written as a decimal, is 0 0.20. And since the tip is the same as one of those there, it's also one-fifth, and so it has 20% value as well. So the tip is 20% of the total food cost. For what percentage of the shirt cost is the discount? All right, we have the whole amount here, which is broken into three sections, right? So it's broken into thirds. So the discount is going to be about one third. One third we have to approximate is going to be about 0.33 and go on for a long time, which is about 33% is what that discount is going to be. So for each of these examples here, you have to look at the information that's provided and notice that the size that's shaded matches the corresponding parts here to get the fractional value, which you convert to a decimal, and then convert into a percentage. <coughs> so what is the percentage? A salesperson sold a car for $18,250, and their commission was $693.50. What percentage of the sale price is their commission? Well, to find that, what we want to do is we want to take their commission amount and divide that by the price of the car, the sales price. Okay, so in our case here, our commission was six hundred and ninety-three dollars divided by fifty, and we want to know what part of that or what percentage of that was was it out of eight thousand eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty. So six ninety-three fifty divided by eighteen two fifty is going to be equal to point zero three eight, and when we do our convert that over to a percentage, we move it over two spots, and that becomes 3.8% as the solution there. So the commission for this guy is 3.8%. Let's take a look at the next one. The bill for a meal was $33.75. The customer left, a, left $40. What percentage of the bill was the tip? So we're going to assume that the difference between here and here was the tip. So let's find out what that amount's going to be, first of all. We know that he left $40, and the bill was $33.75. So by subtracting that, we can see how much extra he gave. So we do a 3, we borrow, make that a 9, and borrow, make that a 9, and borrow. 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 7 is 2, decimal comes down, 9 minus 3 is 6. And so we can see that the tip was $6.25. But we want to know what percentage of the bill was the tip. Okay, the bill was 33 and the tip was 625. So we're going to do the tip divided by the bill. Okay, so our tip is 6.25. We divide that by the bill amount, which was 3375. And when you use a calculator, what you get is you get 0.185. So as a percent, that becomes 18. 0.5%. The original price of a bicycle was $375. Now it's on sale for $295. What percentage of the original was the markdown? So we know we had it at $375 and now it became $295. So when we subtract this, what we discover is that there's an $80 decrease in price. Right, The price has come down $80. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the percentage of the original. What's the markdown? 
Okay, the markdown was $80 off of the original, which was $375. That's our markdown there, and that's our original there. 80 divided by 375 is going to be equal to 0.213. We move this over there, two spaces, and that becomes 21.3% right there. Okay, so if you had a little question here on are you ready for more, and you may or may not have done that in the class, but you're looking at this equilateral triangle with step one, and each time you do it, you're adding it there. And so you're looking at what percentage does the perimeter increase at the various steps there. Um, it may be a little more complicated than you wanna deal with right now, that's okay. I know for me, I'm gonna skip this part here, but if you did this in class, then awesome. Hopefully you got a good solution there. But we're gonna move to the next part. The next activity in class you had was on the sporting goods where your teacher gave you either a problem card or a data card. And your job was, if you had a problem card, look at the problem and think about what information you need to answer the question and ask your partner for that information. If you had a data card, then you're, you have to ask them what specifically do they need information about. Just give them what's on the card and nothing extra. Okay, don't go beyond that there. So your summary. Your summary for today's lesson is something like this. Here we go. Basically, what we're looking at is that to find a 30% increase of a number, we can find uh, to be 130% of 50. So we're taking our 1 and we're adding to it the 0 0.30 for that 1.3 or that 1 plus 30% for a total of 130%. If it's a decrease, we're subtracting 100, right? And you end up with just 70% right there. And we can write that out by converting the 130 to 1.3 or 70 gets converted into 0.7 right there. So there are a couple ways, and this in our case here, there are at least two ways to solve different problems depending on which way you wanted to go. And like we saw, you could do it different ways yourself as well. So take a moment to do your homework and then come back and see how you did. And here is tonight's homework on finding the percentage. So the music store marks up instruments it sells by 30%. If a store bought a guitar for $45, what will its store price be? So the store price is going to be the whole price plus the 30% markup, right? So it's 1 plus 0 0.30, which we can write as 1.30 times the original price, which was $45. So we take our whole amount plus the 30% to get 1.30. 1.30 times 45 is going to be $58.50. So that's one way of going about solving it. Again, there are other ways that you could have done, and that's fine too, right? Perhaps you decided to do $45 and multiply that by the 30%, where you would get $13.50. And then you take that value and you add that back to the initial cost. And when you add that together, you still end up with $58.50, right? So either method would work, depends on which one you're comfortable with and what you wanted to do. The price setting on a trumpet says $104. How much did the store pay for that? So that's already included in the markup, isn't it? We know that they mark up things by 30%, okay? So think of it this way. If you have the original, right, the original price, original price, and you multiply that by 1.30, which is what we know we're multiplying by, that gives you the amount they're selling it for, which in our case was $104. So to find the original price, I would actually divide both sides by 1.3, or 1.30, and 104 divided by 1.30 tells me that the, my original price, or what the store paid for, I should say, is going to be eighty dollars. That's how much the store paid for it was eighty dollars. If the store paid seventy-five dollars for a clarinet and sold it for a hundred dollars, did the store mark up their price by thirty percent? Well, let's find out. If the original was seventy-five, okay, and we take that amount and we multiply it by one point three zero. Again, that's the original plus thirty percent. Seventy-five times one point three zero is ninety-seven dollars and fifty cents. So is that amount equal to that amount there? We would say, nope, it's not. They actually sold it for more than 30%. 
And in our case here, we could look and say, well, this is actually gonna be, if $100 minus 75, they sold it for $25 more. So 25 is what percent of the initial price, which was 75? Well, that reduces to a third, which is 33%. So they actually sold it for my 33% more than the initial value there. Number two, if family eats at a restaurant, the bill is $42. The family leaves a tip and spends $49.77. How much was the tip in dollars? Well, let's take our total amount that they spent, $49.77, and let's subtract from that the amount of the bill. So that becomes $7.77, which is what they spent on that bill, or what the tip was gonna be. So how much was the tip as a percentage of the bill? So that is found by doing tip divided by the bill. Our tip was 777 and the bill it said was 42. So 7.77 divided by 42 is 0.185. We'll turn that into a percent. We're gonna move over two spaces and that becomes 18.5%. All right, so let's turn the page here. Let's see what we have on the next page. Okay, it says the price of gold is often reported per ounce. At the end of 2005, the price was $513. At the end of 2015, 10 years later, it was $1,060. What percentage of the price per gold ounce, price per ounce of gold increase? So we need to see how much it did increase by, first of all. So our new amount minus our original amount tells us that this gold increased by $547. So the percent of increase is gonna be how much did it increase over what it started with? So we went from 547 is our percentage of increase divided by our initial amount of 513. 547 divided by 513 is 1.066, okay? Now that again, we could round that if we wanted to. We're gonna move that over two decimal points to make it a percentage, which becomes either 106.6% or if I chose to round that, I could say 107% was our percentage of price per ounce of gold increase. Looking at number four. Okay, it says a phone keeps track of the number of steps taken in distance traveled based on the information table. Is there a proportional relationship between the two quantities? All right, let's just take a look. To be proportional, there should be a constant proportionality. And we can call this X and this Y. And we would say one divided by 950 in this case. Well, one divided by 950 is equal to, ready, 0 0.0010526, I think I wrote down 72, okay? In this case here, three divided by 2852 becomes 0 0.00105183. And we can see we're pretty good up to the five, pretty good up to the five, but then we have some change here, some change there. And this last one, 5.1 over 48.45, ends up being, I guess this was a three, sorry, ends up being 0 0.00105 So again, we're good to there, and this one matches that one. So we could say there's a proportional relationship between those two, but this one right here is not proportional because it doesn't have the same um, constant proportionality when you do the math for that one. So we would say, nope, not gonna work because of that one right there. All right, and our last one for the day, Noah picked three kilograms of cherries. May picked half as many cherries as Noah. How many total kilograms of cherries did May and Noah pick? Okay, so if Noah picked one, or three kilograms, sorry, we're gonna put the one to represent 100% of what he picked here times his three kilograms, and we're gonna to add to that uh, because she picked half as many, okay? So we're gonna to add to that half of what Noah did for the other one. Now that half as many can be written as a decimal. We can write that as 0.5 times, I don't know where it in for Noah, it should be three times three, and we can combine that together to say, okay, this is 1.5, times three, and that's one way of writing it, just like that. Now when I look at my answers over here, I notice I have lots of fractions there. 
So I could rewrite this 1.5 as one and a half, right, times three, or I could say that it is, as an improper fraction, two times one is two plus one is three. I could say it's three over two times three. That works there. Or I can go back to what I originally had, which was one plus a half, all of that, times three there. And so when we look at our answer choices here, we have three plus a half, which doesn't match those. We'd say no to that one. Three minus a half, again, no. Here is one plus a half, which matches this guy right there, times three. So that would be a good choice. And then this one here is one plus a half times three. That looks a little bit like the first one, but notice it's missing this three value there. So it's not gonna work out. So we would say C is the answer choice, and that is it. Hope that helps you out. We'll see you next time.